Hello everyone, Blackbox here. In uh, this video I'll be showing you how to start up the Airbus from the cold and dark state. So the plan is to start up everything and uh, do the pushback and taxi out to the departure runway. And uh, maybe you have guessed it already, we are at uh, Zurich Airport and we'll be flying Edelweiss today. Here we're just getting into the cockpit. We're just checking that uh, all the emergency equipment is uh, in place and that maintenance hasn't left any warning flags in the cockpit. Okay then, so let's take our seat. Now, before we switch on any electric power source in this uh, aircraft, we check the technical logbook and see if there's any technical defects we should know about. Also, we have to make sure that the aircraft is released to service by maintenance. But uh, we're lucky today, everything uh, is working and the aircraft has been released. So now we just do the cockpit safety inspection, checking that both master switches are switched off and the engine mode selector is in the position norm. We then have a look at the weather radar, make sure the power supply switch is off. We'll check that the wind shear or the predictive wind shear switch is in off. The gain knob is in the auto calibrate position and that the mode selector is set to weather and turbulence. We then check that the landing gear lever is in the down position and that both window wipers are set to off. Okay, now we can uh, switch on the electric power. We first check that the both battery switches are off and that the battery voltage is above 25.5 volt. That is the case and so we'll switch on battery 1, wait a few seconds and then switch on battery 2. Now since we have external electric power available, we'll just simply press the external power switch. Now all the electric buses are powered and the whole aircraft comes to life. At this stage you just simply leave the aircraft alone for a few minutes just to give all the computers its time to power up. And usually this is a good time to get a cup of coffee. Or tea if you prefer. Okay, so I've got my coffee and well, there it is. All the systems have powered up. So we continue with our flow. Next up is the APU fire test. Okay, that looks good, and so we'll start up the APU. Now, once the starter of the APU kicks in, you'll see the voltage of the batteries decrease uh, quite drastically. But that is quite normal and uh, nothing to worry about. As soon as the starter cuts out, the batteries will be recharged. Okay, APU is now available and so we can switch on the APU bleed. This supplies the air conditioning system and the air conditioning packs with the bleed air and later on you can use the bleed air to start the engines. Next we'll check the status of the aircraft and see if there's any inop systems. And at the moment all the inop systems are due to the fact that our ADRs and our initial reference units aren't aligned. 
Then we'll check that the oxygen indication is uh, not boxed in amber. And also we'll check the hydraulic quantities. Now I just see that the yellow system is actually below the normal filling range. Um, just have a look if we can actually refill this. And I can see uh, we can refill oil, but uh, we cannot refill the hydraulic. So I guess it's just a simulator thing and we'll just ignore it for now. Next on the list we have to check that we have enough engine oil. The oil quantity should be above 9.5 quarts. So before the outside check is performed, we'll check that the flap lever corresponds with the indications. Also we check that the parking brake is on and that the speed brake lever is retracted and disarmed. And of course we have to check that the brake accu pressure is in the green band. So at this stage the pilot monitoring will go outside and do the outside check. The pilot flying will continue his flow in the cockpit. Now the overt panel is uh, divided into three parts and uh, the flow always goes from bottom to up and so we'll start on the left. So we'll check that the crew oxygen is uh, switched on. We'll switch on the ground control of the voice recorder and then we'll do a cockpit voice recorder test. For this you have to make sure that the parking brake is set and that the interphone switch on the audio control panel 1 is set to on. Now this switch is giving me a hard time. Once you manage to get the interphone system uh, switched on, you'll press the test switch, wait a couple of seconds and you'll hear the uh, tone. Okay, we'll check that all the flight control computers are working, there's no fault lights, and then we'll switch on the ADRs. Then we'll go to the bottom of the middle panel, start with the lights, setting the strobe switch to auto, also selecting NAV lights, the seatbelt signs, the no smoking signs, and we'll arm the emergency exit lights. Next we'll perform a light test. Check that all the light bulbs are working. Okay, looks good. Now checking that the ditching push button is switched off, that the landing elevation switch is normal, at the air conditioning panel we'll check that the cross speed switch is an auto, Getting to the electric panel, we have to do a battery check or battery charger check. For this we select the ELEC SD page. And then we'll switch off both batteries. Wait a few seconds, switch them back on. And check that the charge current uh, gets below 60 amps within 10 seconds. Okay, looks like the chargers are working properly. And so we'll get to the fuel panel, see that all lights are out. Then we'll continue moving up and do the engine fire warning test. Make sure you can see eight light bulbs in the fire switch itself. And also don't forget to check the pedestal below the engine master switch that the fire is displayed there. Same procedure for engine 2. Looks good and we'll move on to the third panel.
this is checked quite quickly just make sure you don't see any white lights or any fault lights and that completes the uh, check of the overhead panel next up the center instrument panel here we'll check the standby ESIS we can already set the local Q and H and make sure there's no warning flags indicated then we'll go to the right and check our clock make sure it has the correct time and last but not least we'll check that the anti-skid nose with steering switch is set to on Moving down to the center pedestal, we'll check our VHF radios, make sure it's set to VHF1, we'll check the audio control panel, I don't like these switches, alright. Then we'll do a quick check of the door lock mechanism. Now we check that the switching panel has all the selectors in a normal mode. Checking both thrust levers in the idle position. And then make sure that the gravity gear extension lever is stowed. Moving to the right side of the pedestal, we'll check that our transponder is set properly. Actually it's still in the auto mode, we'll put it to standby. Altitude reporting is on. And last but not least, we'll check the VHF2 panel. Make sure it's set to VHF2 and the audio control panel is correctly set. This completes the first part. The second part will begin with the setup in the MCDU, i.e. inserting the flight plan and the performance data and so on. So stay tuned, see you in the next one.